I'm Emil Sayar, and today I'll present you the work I've been undertaking first as an intern and then as an engineer as part of the Mechanos project, which is a joint project between three laboratories, LIOS, LBMC, and Creatis, as well as the Hospice Civil de Lyon. First, I'll introduce you to some medical background. It's important to know that bone is a very frequent site for metastasis, and metastatic lesions can lead to pathological fractures which can decrease substantially the quality of life of patients. There are three types of metastatic lesions, but I focused on osteolytic lesions, which are caused by abnormal bone destruction. On the right side, you can see an example of a CT scan with an osteolytic lesion where the bone has been partially destroyed. The Mechanos project aims at obtaining precise clinical scores and simulations for fracture risk assessment. I've been using exclusively CT scans during my work. Computed tomography is an X-ray imaging modality that gives precious information at the density of body tissues, which helps to detect metastatic lesions where the bone is less dense. CT scans are a standard in clinical routines, and it could be very helpful to be able to use them to automatically detect metastasis. My main objective has been to automatically prepare patient's data in order to be used by a finite elements model to predict the fracture risk accurately. To do so, there were two important steps. The first was to automatically segment femur and extract it from the image, and then to do the same thing with the metastatic lesions using deep learning. I chose to use the UNET network which is an efficient convolutional neural network for the automatic segmentations. I use both UNET in 2D and 3D with slices or volumes as input. And I started by using a, a data set that consisted of standard mechanos acquisitions, but other scans from OSPCV de Lyon were then added as the quantity of data is key to the training of a neural network. This resulted in an inhomogeneous data set for the femur segmentation, which required a big amount of pre-processing. For the lesion segmentation, uh, the task was far more complex and required a lot more data than previously, and the idea to alleviate the issue has been to implement data augmentation in order to artificially increase the size of the data set. On the right, you can see manually annotated lesions. The lesions can be very diverse and hard to define. Uh, that's why the task is way more difficult. In order to homogenize the data set and increase its size, I implemented a pre-processing pipeline that revolves around splitting the volumes in two in order to obtain one femur per volume, then use affine registrations on the femurs in order to ensure the same orientation for the bones. The volumes were then resized and normalized to be processed by the neural network. For the lesion segmentations, I used a, a data augmentation method that works by extracting random parts of existing lesions, then applying spatial transforms and modifying its intensity values in order to apply it to another healthy femur while preserving the diversity of the data. The resulting data obtained is quite realistic. As you can see here, it's very hard to tell apart the two lesions, the real one being on the left and the artificial on the right, which was applied to the healthy femur that's in the middle. I evaluated the femur segmentation using two complementary metrics, the dice score and the hazard distance. The dice gives a score depending on the intersection between the ground truth and the automatic segmentation, and the hazard distance gives the maximum distance between the ground truth and the segmentation. The results were satisfactory, although slightly better for 3D units. I implemented post-processing with morphological operations to fill holes in the segmentation as well as to remove unwanted segmented areas, and it drastically improved the Hausdorff on both networks. I worked only in 3D uh, for the lesion segmentation process, as it worked really well before, and I used patches rather than resizing the volumes in order to keep the most features in the input of the neural network. As expected, the results were inferior than for femur segmentation due to the difficulty of the task, but the data augmentation helped a lot to improve the results, uh, more than doubling the initial results. To conclude, I implemented a pre and post processing pipeline, as well as data augmentation method, which allowed me to obtain satisfactory results for both segmentation tasks. 
The segmentation of metastatic lesions could still be improved, especially with new manual annotations, which will soon be added to the database. Thank you for listening. I'll try my best to answer any questions you may have.